Last Tuesday, I issued a 48-hour ultimatum to the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs to substantiate his allegation that over 60% of contracts awarded by the Niger Delta Development Commission went to members of the National Assembly. I said then that the Honorable Minister owed it to himself, to NDDC, to the Niger Delta, and to the country to provide evidence to support these very serious allegations. The Honorable Minister has failed to respond to my request. Therefore, I must conclude that his statement intended solely to gaslight the nation to avoid accountability for the evident maladministration and malfeasance in the Niger Delta Development Corporation. In my time in the House of Representatives, I have held every conceivable leadership position from minority whip to minority leader to leader of the House and now the Speaker of the House. I recognize that the House has not always lived up to the high expectations of the Nigerian people. As much as we still have a lot to do in that regard, I refuse to sit here in good conscience and allow anyone to assassinate the character of the House in an attempt to deflect accountability for their conduct in office. Such mendacity, as was witnessed in the public hearing, will not be tolerated from anybody, no matter how highly placed. This morning, I've asked the clerk of the House of Representatives to engage the services of legal counsel and instruct them to initiate a criminal complaint of perjury against the minister. At the same time, we will instruct counsel to explore the possibility of a civil defamation suit against the minister. The House of Representatives is a public trust placed in our care for the duration of our term in office. We must prove ourselves worthy of the public trust or risk the censure of history. Therefore, we will resist every attempt to undermine this institution, whether such attempts come from within or from outside. This House will live up to the highest expectations of the Nigerian people, and this is our commitment, and we will not fail. Thank you, and God bless. The reply from the Minister of Niger Delta, and I will read his reply. Some Niger Delta Development Commission contracts allegedly given to some members of the National Assembly, Senate, and House of Representatives. And I want us to listen very carefully to his reply. May I extend to Mr. Speaker the compliments of my office and those of the staff of the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. I refer to the resolution of the House passed on the 21st of July, 2020, and forwarded to me on the same day, directing me to respond to the contents therein within 48 hours. I hereby respond as follows. The investigating committee on NDDC refused and or neglected to give me the opportunity to explain that reference to most NDDC contracts yearly being awarded since 2001 from the records allegedly to members of the National Assembly in both chambers were done without the knowledge of the alleged beneficiaries. Whatever, whatever that means. However, the two chairmen of the committees of both chambers had adequate knowledge. 
once again is referring to two people. I never referred to mem I never referred to members of the Ninth National Assembly as beneficiaries of NDDC contracts. <laughs> Please, one, can we be quiet? I never referred, again, let me repeat. I never referred to members of the Ninth National Assembly as beneficiaries of NDDC contracts. As NDDC contracts, or, or as NDDC is yet to fully implement any NDDC budget since the commencement of the national, Ninth National Assembly. In fact, the 2019 budget passed in February and harmonized between the 4th and, 8th and 6th, 5th of March 2020 was received by the Commission in the middle of April 2020, when SIM was designated to expire on the 31st of May 2020. However, it is pertinent to point out that the clerk of the National Assembly forwarded a letter Reference NAS CNA 115, Volume 381175, dated 20th of March 2020, without attaching the budget details, indicating that the 2020 budget of the NDDC passed into law was being forwarded. Copy of the letter is attached. This anomaly was brought to the attention of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee investigating a purported financial recklessness by the management of the Commission in July 2020 through the first outcry, though the first outcry was on allegation of missing 40 billion, which was, has nothing to do with what I asked for. So, four, it has always been known that the two chairmen of the committees on NDDC in both chambers yearly exhibit unusual influence to the exclusion of committee members and even the management of the NDDC in appropriating funds to details embellished in the budget after passage of line items at the plenaries. Allegation. In the 2019 budget, the executive director project forwarded to me the attached list of 19 old contracts, old, old contracts amounting to almost nine billion after tax that the House of Representatives Committee Chairman on NDDC, Honorable Tunji Ojo, insisted the IMC of the NDDC must pay before 2019 budget details could be released to the Commission Annex A1. Now that paragraph, just to, for, so that we understand it very well, is alleging again alleging without proof that the chairman forwarded a list of old 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 contracts which required payment let me be clear the chairman ndc only became a member of this house in june last year and only became the chairman of the committee in September, October. So what he's saying now, he's not saying that he gave the chairman contracts. He's just saying the chairman, perhaps, who knows, I don't, asked him to pay for some contracts that had already been executed. It's got neither here nor there. To show you, to show you some typical examples here with attached are documents showing contracts or amount of contracts that were paid by, uh, to the, by the chairman or were asked to be paid by the chairman of both committees. The above explanation would have been made uh, before now. May I assure Mr. Speaker that as a former minority leader of the 8th Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I shall forever promote the ideals of the National Assembly as an institution Hence, I would not make, I would not make 
the attached documents public since I obtained the documents from the lead forensic auditors in confidence. Permit me to explain that any reference to this is important. Permit me to explain that any reference to 50 or 60 percent during the investigative hearing was in answer to a question by a member of the committee as to whether or not a medical director could act as executive director of projects within the confines of the NDDC Act 2000. I answered in the affirmative, pointing out that the greatest project in the world today is COVID-19 pandemic, which is medical in nature. Furthermore, I am made to understand that 50 to 60 percent of NDDC yearly budgets are medical in nature. Therefore, it is fitting for a medical doctor to act as executive director of projects in those trying times. Now, I think the Honorable Minister has walked back his statement. So what he's saying here is, is that the 60 percent he was talking about was as to the nature of projects of NDDC, not 60 percent as to contracts awarded to or for the to members. The last paragraph says, please accept, sir, the assurance of my esteemed regards and pass my and, and do pass my explanation to my colleagues in the Ninth Assembly who probably misunderstood my assertion. I'm not passing it to the Ninth Assembly. I'm passing your the so-called misunderstanding to the whole world. The Honorable Minister is saying here that he never said what, is, what we thought he said. I knew when I made bold that statement for him to come up with, his, with proof of his allegation that there was no way and no how that that was going to happen because no such thing happens here. And his letter has confirmed it. He has pointed fingers to the chairman of the committee here in the House and in the Senate. But in pointing that, those fingers, again, he has said, on the one hand, the chairman was not a member of this House at the time, and all he has said about the chairman is that he asked him to pay some people who had old contracts outstanding. He never said that the, even the chairman is not alleging God contracts. Um, so I will um, pass this on to the uh, Committee on Ethics and Privilege. If there anything here uh, needs to be further examined, I'm glad we have put this to rest.